Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Anthony's Parish. Today is the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is City of God. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your a joy to be back in your midst, the good people of St. Anthony's. Father Thomas, I was here up until 2015, three years I was here, and then I moved to the Philippines for four years, and then in 2019 I was reassigned to America so this past week I came over and saw my mother after five years uh, here outside of London. Um, so spending time with her this month of July, happily spending time with you also uh, until I go back to America to continue my assignment to the beginning of August. So it's a joy to be here to celebrate the love of God, the risen life, to take hold of that risen life in our lives. The joy and gladness of the risen Christ will be ours. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Obey the voice of the Lord your God, keeping those commandments and laws of his that are written in the book of this law. And you shall return to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. For this law that I enjoin on you today is beyond your strength or beyond your reach. It is not in heaven, so that you need to wonder. Who will go up to heaven for us and bring it down to us so that we may hear it and keep it? Nor is it beyond the seas, so that you need to wonder. Who will cross the seas for us and bring it back to us so that we may hear it and keep it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for your observance. The word of the Lord. Your response, seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. This is my prayer to you. My prayer for your favor. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that will never fail. Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. As for me, in my poverty and pain, let your help, O God, lift me up. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. The poor, when they see it, will be glad. The good, the God-serving, the poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive, for the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. For God will bring help to Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. The sons of his servants will inherit it. Those who love his name shall dwell there. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the unseen God and the firstborn of all creation, for in him were created. In all things in heaven and on earth, everything visible and everything invisible, thrones, dominions, sovereignties, powers, all the things were created through him and for him. Before anything was created, he existed, and he holds all things in unity. 
Now the church is his body and, it's, and he is, is the head. As he is the beginning, he was the first to be born from the dead so that he should be the first in every way because God wanted all perfection to be found in him and all things to be reconciled through him and for him. Everything in heaven and everything on earth when he made peace by his death on the cross. The word of the Lord. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. There was a lawyer who, to disconcert Jesus, stood up and said to him, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You have answered right, said Jesus, do this, and life is yours. But the man was anxious to justify himself and said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of brigands. They took all he had, beat him, and then made off leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be traveling down the same road, but when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite who came to the place saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion when he saw him. He went up and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. He then lifted him onto his mount, carried him to the inn, and looked after him. Next day he took out two denarii and handed them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and on my way back I will make good any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who fell into the brigand's hands. The one who took pity on him, he replied. Jesus said to him, go and do the same yourself. The Gospel of the Lord.
Again, let me express my joy to be in your midst. My mother is in a rural parish on the outskirts of Oxford, a um, very small parish, a very intimate setting. Very nice to be here with such a crowd and also with familiar faces. Some Irish people I spot in the middle there that I know well. And with, of course, the choir, the youthfulness of our choir, how wonderful that is at St. Anthony's. Jesus says then in our gospel today, go and do the same yourself. Go and be truly a neighbor to all. And this is a, a clear teaching for you and I. We, we, we understand, in a way, there's a mystery here, but we understand what the Lord is saying what he is teaching here. Go and be truly a neighbor to everyone. The Good Samaritan does many acts of charity towards his neighbor, bandaging his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, lifting him up onto his own mount, carrying him to the inn, looking after him, taking out his expenses to denarii, handing them to the innkeeper. And within these words, there is much symbolic significance. But in a way, the more difficult or the more onerous, the more challenging requirement for fulfilling this calling lies not so much with the works of charity, the doings, but with the susceptibility of the heart to be moved the susceptibility of the heart that's where the greater challenge lies with a heart that is open and able to be moved his heart was moved with compassion when he saw him the good Samaritan was ready to have his heart touched. He was ready to be inwardly moved by another's pitiful plight. He was open. He was living out of the heart. And not only, as we may at times, in the pressures of this life, live out only of the head. He was living out of the heart. He was able to be moved. His heart was accessible to be touched by the sorrows of others. The priest and the Levite in the, in the parable, on the other hand, were not in touch with their full humanity. They were not living out of their hearts. They were only dwelling in their heads. In our gospel today, brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling us to love with his gift of charity with all ourselves, with the fullness of our being, and most especially, therefore, with our hearts. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus speaks in the first place of the heart. God's love at work in our lives is coming out of our wholeness, being channeled through the entirety of our persons. So, good question, self-examination. How is my heart engaged in the everyday living out of my Christian life? How is my heart coming into everyday living? Is my heart open to others and to what they are living? Do I allow myself to be affected by the stories of their lives? Or 
On the contrary, am I somewhat indifferent? Am I cold-hearted or hard-hearted, putting up defense mechanisms so that I'm not affected by people living their lives? As the Lord reveals through Moses in our first reading today, our integral giving of ourselves over to love of charity calls forth from us an authentic obedience towards God. Moses says to the people, God says through Moses to you and I, obey the voice of the Lord your God and you shall return to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Before God, as the psalmist tells us, we stand as poor beggars. We aspire to God-seeking hearts. Seek the Lord, you who are poor. That's me, and that's you also. We're poor. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chains. It is in, in this sense, returning to today's gospel, that we do well to not only see ourselves in the Good Samaritan, living out Christian charity, but also to see ourselves in the one lying beaten and half dead. For only when we have been loved back to life by our God who comes to meet us and to minister to us in the many faces of our brothers and sisters by their hands and by their hearts, only then are we truly able to go out and to do the same ourselves. Only then are we empowered to be able to do the same. In receiving God's mercy, we become equipped to show that mercy to others. The parable of the Good Samaritan is the story of our redemption, yours and mine, with Jesus Christ himself being the Good Samaritan to you and to me. That we too can become Good Samaritans for others. Yes, this is made possible in Christ and only in Christ. So let us ask for the grace to live in Christ and so be moved with compassion and delight in our hearts when we see the sorrows and we see the joys in the lives of the people around us. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
주가 두 주가 died under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. At this celebration that is being offered as a thanksgiving mass for Edith, Obi, and family, we now present our petitions to Jesus, the Good Samaritan, who is moved with compassion for us. For the church, May Christians be good neighbors to all those who need our care, regardless of their background, race, or religion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For our country in this time of political upheaval, that politician would serve the public interest to the best of their ability and model values of integrity, humility, and empathy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For the Holy Father's intentions for the month of July, we pray for the elderly who represent the roots and memory of a people. May their experience and wisdom help young people to look towards the future with hope and responsibility. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For our parish community, we pray with gratitude for all those who serve those in our society most in need, whether professionally or as volunteers. May they be granted the strength and perseverance to continue to bring Christ into the darkness of people's lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For all those who have died recently or whose anniversaries occur at this time, and for all the dead, that they would be united with Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For our personal needs and for those who are dear to us, we pray in silence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We ask Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to bring peace to our troubled world and within our own hearts, as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus, you have taught us that our duty and joy is to love you and to love one another. Help us by your grace to fulfill these commandments as you desire, so that we may inherit the life you have won for us, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is God of Mercy and Compassion.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty work. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the ablation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching standing with great confidence before our Heavenly Father, we turn to Him and we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is One Bread, One Body.
perfection is indescribable. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we now uh, proceed with the second collection for the seafarers. So I guess that will be taking place as we speak, already has taken place on the way out. A few announcements otherwise, the pilgrimage to Walsingham, the pro-life pilgrimage to Walsingham, which is taking place on the Saturday 6th of August. If you're interested in that, then see Paul Cunningham after any 10 o'clock weekday mass. Also in the newsletter, you can 
see that there is a late vocation discernment weekend to the priesthood taking place in September. So if that concerns you, please take a look in the newsletter. Also in September, again in the newsletter, there's information concerning an evangelization conference with Bishop Robert Barron. After the 15th of July, we here at St. Anthony's, or at least for the brothers and fathers, we move into our summer period, so there will be no more 7.45 a.m. Mass. Or p.m. I don't know. Is that a.m.? That's an a.m. Mass. No more 7.45 a.m. Mass. Are you sure that's a.m.? Yes, it's a.m. Uh, we will be welcoming, therefore, visiting priests of our community uh, over the weeks ahead. And then an important date, the 2nd of October, where the community of St. John celebrates uh, 10 years of presence. I was here in 2012 as part of that foundation. Uh, so the 2nd of October, the 10-year anniversary, a celebratory day. And lastly, the all-important cake sale and flowers for organized and working towards the secular Franciscan order. So that's taking place after Mass. So those are the announcements. So please do take a newsletter as you head off home and have a beautiful weekend in the summer sun. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is Our God Reigns. <laughs> 